the Mahabharata. ADI Parva. Section 4. Paloma Parva. Bhagras Ravasodi, the son of Loma Harshana, versed in the Puranas, while present in the forest of Nyamisha, at the twelve years' sacrifice of Saunika, surnamed Kulapati, stood before the Rishis in attendance. Having studied Puranas with meticulous devotion and thus being thoroughly acquainted with them, he addressed them with joined hands thus, I have graphically described to you the history of Udhanka which is one of the causes of King Janam Jaya's snake sacrifice. What, revered sirs, do yet wish to hear now? What shall I relate to you? The holy men replied, O oh, son of Loma Harshana, we shall ask thee about what we are anxious to hear. And thou wilt recount the tales one by one. Saunika, our revered master, is at present attending the apartment of the holy fire. He is acquainted with those divine stories which relate to the gods and asuras. He adequately knoweth the histories of men, serpents, and gondharvs. Further, O Sodhi, in this sacrifice that learned Brahmana is the chief. He is able, faithful to his vows, wise, a master of the sastras and the Aranyaka, a speaker of truth, a lover of peace, a mortifier of the flesh, and an observer of the penances according to the authoritative decrees. He is respected by us all. It behoveth us therefore to wait for him. And when he is seated on his highly respected seat, thou wilt answer what? That best of Dwajas shall ask of thee. So he said, Be it so. And when the high souled master hath been seated, I shall narrate, questioned by him, sacred stories on a variety of subjects. After a while, that excellent Brahmana, Saunika, having duly finished all his duties, and having propitiated the gods with prayers and the manes with oblations of water, came back to the place of sacrifice. Where with Sodhi seated before was the assembly of saints of rigid vows. Sitting at ease. And when Saunika was seated in the midst of the Ritviks. And Sathyas, who were also in their seats, he spake as followeth. Section V. Paloma Parva continued. Saunika said, Child, thy father formerly read the whole of the Puran as. O son of Loma Harshana, and the Bharata with Krishna Dwaypayana. Hast thou also made them thy study? In those ancient records are chronicled interesting stories and the history of the first generations of the wise men, all of which we heard being rehearsed by thy sire. In the first place, I am desirous of hearing the history of the race of Bragu. Recount thou that history, we shall attentively listen to thee. So he answered, by me hath been acquired all that was formerly studied by the high-souled Brahmanas including Vaisampayana and repeated by them. By me hath been acquired all that had been studied by my father. O oh. descendant of the Bragu race, attend then to so much as relate to the exalted race of Bragu, revered by Indra and all the gods, by the tribes of Rishis and Marauds, winds. O oh great Muni, I shall first properly recount the story of this family, as told in the Puran as the great and blessed Saint Bragu, we are informed, was produced by the self-existing Brahma from the fire at the sacrifice of Varana. And Bragu had a son, named Chyavana, whom he dearly loved. And to Chyavana was born a virtuous son called Pramadi. And Pramadi had a son named Rurubai. Gritaki, the celestial dancer, and to Ruru also by his wife. Pramadvara, was born a son, whose name was Sunika. He was, O Saunika, thy great ancestor exceedingly virtuous in his ways. He was devoted to asceticism, of great reputation, proficient in law, and eminent among those having a knowledge of the Vedas. He was virtuous, truthful, and of well-regulated fare. Saunika said, O son of Sudha, I ask thee why the illustrious son of 
Bragu was named Chiavana. Do tell me all. Sodi replied, Bragu had a wife named Puloma whom he dearly loved. She became big with child by Bragu. And one day while the virtuous continent Puloma was in that condition, Bragu, great among those that are true to their religion, leaving her at home went out to perform his ablutions. It was then that the Raksasa called Puloma came to Bragu's abode. And entering the Rishi's abode, the Raksasa saw the wife of Bragu, irreproachable in everything. And seeing her he became filled with lust and lost his senses. The beautiful Puloma entertained the Raksasa thus. Arrived, with roots and fruits of the forest. And the Raksasa who burnt. With desire upon seeing her, became very much delighted and resolved, Oh! Good sage, to carry her away who was so blameless in every respect. My design is accomplished, said the Raksasa, and so seizing that. Beautiful matron he carried her away. And, indeed, she of agreeable. Smiles, had been betrothed by her father himself, to him, although the. Former subsequently bestowed her, according to due rights, on Bragu. Oh! Thou of the Bragu race, this wound rankled deep in the Rakshasa's mind. And he thought the present moment very opportune for carrying the lady. Away and the Raksasa saw the apartment in which the sacrificial fire was kept burning brightly. The Raksasa then asked the flaming element tell me, O Agni, whose wife this woman rightfully is. Thou art the mouth of gods, therefore thou art bound to answer my question. This lady of superior complexion had been first accepted by me as wife, but her father subsequently bestowed her on the false Bragu. Tell me truly if this fair one can be regarded as the wife of Bragu, for having found her alone, I have resolved to take her away by force from the hermitage. My heart burneth with rage when I reflect that Bragu hath got possession of this woman of slender waist, first betrothed to me. So he continued, in this manner the Raksasa asked the flaming god of fire again and again whether the lady was Bragu's wife. And the god was afraid to return an answer. Thou, O god of fire, said he, residest constantly within every creature, as witness of her or his merits and demerits. O thou respected one, then answer my question truly. Has not Bragu appropriated her who was chosen by me as my wife? Thou shouldst Declare truly whether, therefore, she is my wife by first choice. After thy answer as to whether she is the wife of Bragu, I will bear her away. From this hermitage even in sight of thee. Therefore answer thou truly. So he continued, the seven-flamed god having heard these words of the Raksasa became exceedingly distressed, being afraid of telling a falsehood and equally afraid of Bragu's curse. And the god at length made answer in words that came out slowly. This Puloma was, indeed, first chosen by thee, O Raksasa, but she was not taken by thee with holy rites and invocations. But this far famed lady was bestowed by her father on Bragu as a gift from desire of blessing. She was not bestowed on thee, O Raksasa, this lady was duly made by the Rishi Bragu his wife with. Vedic writes in my presence. This is she I know her. I dare not speak a falsehood. O oh, thou best of the Raksasas, falsehood is never respected in this world. Section 6. Paloma Parva continued. So he said, O oh, Brahmana, having heard these words from the god of fire. The Raksasa assumed the form of a boar, and seizing the lady carried her away with the speed of the wind even of thought. Then the child of Bragu lying in her body enraged at such violence, dropped from his mother's womb, for which he obtained the name of Chiavana. And the Raksasa perceiving the infant drop from the mother's womb, shining like the sun, 
quitted his grasp of the woman, fell down and was instantly converted into ashes. And the beautiful Paloma, distracted with grief, a oh, Brahmana of the Bhrigu race, took up her offspring Chyavana, the son of Bhrigu and walked away. And Brahma, the grandfather of all, himself saw her, the faultless wife of his son, weeping. And the grandfather of all comforted her who was attached to her son. And the drops of tears which rolled down her eyes formed a great river. And that river began to follow the footsteps of the wife of the great ascetic Bhrigu. And the grandfather of the world seeing that river follow the path of his sons. Wife gave it a name himself, and he called it Wadhusara. And it passeth by the hermitage of Chiavana. And in this manner was born Chiavana of great ascetic power, the son of Bhrigu. And Bhrigu saw his child Chiavana and its beautiful mother. And the Rishi in a rage asked her, By whom wast thou made known to that Rakshasa? Who resolved to carry thee away? O thou of agreeable smiles, the Rakshasa could not know thee as my while. Therefore tell me who it was that told the Rakshasa so, in order that I may curse him through anger. And Paloma replied, O possessor of the six attributes, I was identified to the Rakshasa by Agni, the god of fire. And he, the Rakshasa, bore me away, who cried like the Karari, female osprey. And it was only by the ardent splendour of this thy son that I was rescued, for the Rakshasa. Seeing this infant, let me go and himself falling to the ground was turned into ashes. So he continued, Bragu, upon hearing this account from Paloma, became exceedingly enraged. And in excess of passion the Rishi cursed Agni, saying, Thou shalt eat of all things. So ends the sixth section called The Curse on Agni In the ADI Parva Section 7 Paloma Parva continued So he said, the god of fire enraged at the curse of Bragu, thus addressed the Rishi, What meaneth this rashness, O Brahmana, that thou hast displayed towards me? What transgression can be imputed to me who was laboring to do justice and speak the truth impartially. Being asked, I gave the true answer. A witness who when interrogated about a fact of which he hath knowledge, representeth otherwise than it is, ruineth his ancestors and descendants both to the seventh generation. He, too, who, being fully cognizant of all the particulars of an affair, doth not disclose what he knoweth, when asked, is undoubtedly stained with guilt. I can also curse thee, but Brahmanas are held by me in high respect. Although these are known to thee, O Brahmana, I will yet speak of them. So please attend. Having, by ascetic power, multiplied myself, I am present in various forms, in places of the daily Homa, at sacrifices. Extending for years, in places where holy rites are performed, such as marriage, etc., and at other sacrifices. With the butter that is poured upon my flame according to the injunctions prescribed in the Vedas, the Devas and the Pitris are appeased. The Devas are the waters, the Pitris are also the waters. The Devas have with the Pitris an equal right to the sacrifices called Darshas and Purnamasas. The Devas therefore are the Pitris and the Pitris, the Devas. They are identical beings, worshipped together and also separately at the changes of the moon. The Devas and the Pitris eat what is poured upon me. I am therefore called the mouth of the Devas and the Pitris. At the new moon the Pitris, and at the full moon the Devas, are fed through my mouth, eating of the clarified butter that is poured on me. Being, as I am, their mouth, how am I to be an eater of all things, clean and unclean? Then Agni, altar reflecting for a while, 
withdrew himself from all places, from places of the daily Homa of the Brahmanas, from all long extending sacrifices, from places of holy rites, and from other ceremonies, without their Oms and Vashits, and deprived of their Svadas and Svahas, sacrificial mantras during offerings, the whole body of creatures became much distressed at the loss of their sacrificial fire. The rishis in great anxiety went to the gods and addressed them thus, Yet, yeah. Immaculate beings. The three regions of the universe are confounded at the cessation of their sacrifices and ceremonies in consequence of the loss of fire. Ordain what is to be done in Tin's matter, so that there may be no loss of time. Then the rishis and the gods went together to the presence of Brahma and they represented to him all about the curse on Agni and the consequent interruption of all ceremonies. And they said, Oh! Thou greatly fortunate! Once Agni hath been cursed by Bhrigu for some reason. Indeed, being the mouth of the gods and also the first who eateth of what is offered in sacrifices, the eater also of the sacrificial butter, how will Agni be reduced to the condition of one who eateth of all things promiscuously? And the creator of the universe hearing these words of theirs summoned Agni to his presence. And Brahma addressed Agni, the creator of all and eternal as himself, in these gentle words, Thou art the creator of the worlds and thou art their destroyer. Thou preserves the three worlds and thou art the promoter of all sacrifices and ceremonies. Therefore behave thyself so that ceremonies be not interrupted. And, O thou eater of the sacrificial butter, why dost thou act so foolishly, being, as thou art, the Lord of all? Thou alone art always pure in the universe and thou art its stay. Thou shall not, with all thy body, be reduced to the state of one who eateth of all things. Promiscuously. O thou of flames, the flame that is in thy viler parts. Shall alone eat of all things alike. The body of thine which eateth of. Flesh, being in the stomach of all carnivorous animals, shall also eat of. All things promiscuously. And as everything touched by the sun's rays. Beko meth pure so shall everything be pure that shall be burnt by thy flames. Thou art, O fire, the supreme energy born of thy own power. Then, O Lord, by that power of thine make the Rishi's curse come true. Continue to receive thy own portion and that of the gods, offered at thy mouth. So he continued, then Agni replied to the grandfather, so be it. And, he then went away to obey the command of the Supreme Lord. The gods and the rishis also returned in delight to the place whence they had come. And the rishis began to perform as before their ceremonies and sacrifices. And the gods in heaven and all creatures of the world rejoiced exceedingly. And Agni too rejoiced in that he was free from the prospect of sin. Thus, O possessor of the six attributes, had Agni been cursed in the days of your by Bhrigu. And such is the ancient history connected with the destruction of the Rakshasa, Paloma, and the birth of Chiavana. Thus endeth the seventh section of the Paloma Parva of the Adi Parva of the Blessed Mahabharata. Section 8 Paloma Parva continued. So he said, O Brahmana, Chiavana, the son of Bhrigu, begot a son in the womb of his wife Sukanya. And that son was the illustrious Pramati of resplendent energy. And Pramati begot in the womb of Gritaki a son, called Ruru. And Ruru begot on his wife Pramadvara a son called Sunika. And I shall relate to you in detail, O Brahmana, the entire history of Ruru of abundant energy. O listen to it then in full. Formerly there was a great Rishi called Schulakesa possessed of ascetic power and learning and kindly disposed towards all creatures. At that time, O Brahmana sage, 
Visvabasu, the king of the Gandharvs, it is said, had intimacy with Manaka, the celestial dancing girl, and the Apsara. Manaka, O thou of the Brigha race, when her time was come, brought forth an infant near the hermitage of Schulaksa, and dropping the newborn infant on the banks of the river, O Brahmana, Manaka, the Apsara, being destitute of pity and shame, went away. And the Rishi, Schulaksa, of great ascetic power, discovered the infant lying forsaken in a lonely part of the riverside. And he perceived that it was a female child, bright as the offspring of an immortal and blazing, as it were, with beauty, and the great Brahmana, Schulaksa, the first of Munis, seeing that female child, and filled with compassion, took it up and reared it. And the lovely child grew up in his holy habitation, the noble-minded and blessed Rishi Schulaksa performing in due succession all the ceremonies, beginning with that at birth as ordained by the divine law. And because she surpassed all of her sex in goodness, beauty, and every quality, the great Rishi called her by the name of Pramadvara. And the pious Ruru, having seen Pramadvara in the hermitage of Schulaksa became one whose Heart was pierced by the god of love. And Ruru by means of his companions. Made his father Pramadi, the son of Bragu, acquainted with his passion. And Pramadi demanded her of the far-famed Schulaksa for his son. And her foster father betrothed the virgin Pramadvara to Ruru, fixing the nuptials for the day when the star Vargadevata, Purvafalgani, would be ascendant. Then within a few days of the time fixed for the nuptials, the beautiful virgin while at play with companions of her own sex, her time having come, impelled by fate, trod upon a serpent which she did not perceive as it lay in coil. And the reptile, urged to execute the will of fate, violently darted its envenomed fangs into the body of the heedless maiden. And stung by that serpent, she instantly dropped senseless on the ground, her color faded and all the graces of her person went off. And with disheveled hair she became a spectacle of woe to her companions and friends. And she who was so agreeable to behold became on her death what was too painful to look at. And the girl of slender waist lying on the ground like one asleep being overcome with the poison of the snake once more became more beautiful than in life. And her foster father and the other holy ascetics who were there, all saw her lying motionless upon the ground with the splendour of a lotus. And then there came many noted Brahmanas filled with compassion, and they sat around her. And Swastiatrita, Mahajana, Kusika, Sankamakala, Uttalaka, Katha, and Swita of great renown, Bharadvaja, Kanakutsya, Arshdishana, Gautama, Pramati, and Pramati's son Ruru, and other inhabitants of the forest, came there. And when they saw that maiden lying dead on the ground, overcome with the poison of the reptile that had bitten her, they all wept filled with compassion. But Ruru, mortified beyond measure, retired from the scene. So ends the 8th section of the Paloma Parva of the Adi Parva of the Blessed Mahabharata. Section 9 Paloma Parva continued. So he said, while those illustrious Brahmanas were sitting around the dead body of Pramadvara, Ruru, sorely afflicted, retired into a deep wood and wept aloud. And overwhelmed with grief he indulged in much piteous lamentation. and. Remembering his beloved Pramadvara, he gave vent to his sorrow in the following words, Alas! The delicate fair one that increaseth my affliction layeth upon the bare ground. What can be more deplorable to us, her friends? If I have been charitable, if I have performed acts of penance, if I have ever revered my superiors, let the Merit of these arts restore to life my beloved one. 
if from my birth I have been controlling my passions, adhere to my vows, let the fair Pramadvara rise from the ground. And while Ruru was indulging in these lamentations for the loss of his bride, a messenger from heaven came to him in the forest and addressed him thus, the words thou utterest, O Ruru, in thy affliction are certainly ineffectual. For, O pious man, one belonging to this world, whose days have run out can never come back to life. This poor child of a Gandharv and Apsara has had her days run out. Therefore, O child, thou shouldst not consign thy heart to sorrow. The great gods, however, have provided beforehand a means of her restoration to life. And if thou compliest with it, thou mayest receive back thy Pramadvara. And Ruru replied, O messenger of heaven, what is that which the gods have ordained? Tell me in full so that, on hearing, I may comply with it. It behoveth thee to deliver me from grief. And the celestial messenger said unto Ruru, Resign half of thy own life to thy bride, and then, O oh, Ruru of the race of Bragu, thy Pramadvara shall rise from the ground. O oh best of celestial messengers, I most willingly offer a moiety of my own life in favor of my bride. Then let my beloved one rise up once more in her dress and lovable form. So he said, Then the king of Gandharvs, the father of Pramadvara, and the celestial messenger, both of excellent qualities, went to the god Dharma, the judge of the dead, and addressed him, saying, If it be thy will, O Dharmaraja, let the amiable Pramadvara, the betrothed wife of Ruru, now lying dead, rise up with the moiety of Ruru's life. And Dharmaraja answered, O messenger of the gods, if it be thy wish, let Pramadvara, the betrothed wife of Ruru, rise up and did with the moiety of Ruru's life. So he continued, and when Dharmaraja had said so, that maiden of superior complexion, Pramadvara, endued with the moiety of Ruru's life, rose as from her slumber. This bestowal by Ruru of a moiety of his own span of life to resuscitate his bride afterwards led, as it would be seen, to a curtailment of Ruru's life. And on an auspicious day their fathers gladly married them with due rites. And the couple passed their days, devoted to each other. And Ruru, having obtained such a wife, as is hard to be found, beautiful and bright, as the filaments of the lotus, made a vow for the destruction of the serpent race. And whenever he saw a serpent he became filled with great wrath and always killed it with a weapon. One day, O Brahmana, Ruru entered an extensive forest. And there he saw an old serpent of the Dundubha species lying stretched on the ground. And Ruru thereupon lifted up in anger his staff, even like to the staff of death, for the purpose of killing it. Then the Dundubha, addressing Ruru, said, I have done thee no harm, O Brahmana. Then wherefore wilt thou slay me in anger? So ends the ninth section of the Paloma Parva of the Adi Parva of the Blessed Mahabharata. Section X. Paloma Parva continued. So he said, and Ruru, on hearing those words, replied, My wife, dear to me as life, was bit by a snake, upon which, I took, O snake, a dreadful vow, viz, that I would kill every snake that I might come across. Therefore shall I smite thee and thou shalt be deprived of life. And the Dundubha replied, O Brahmana, the snakes that bite man are quite different in type. It behoveth thee not to slay Dundubas who are serpents only in name, subject like other serpents to the same calamities, but not sharing their good fortune, in woe the same but enjoy different. The Dundubas should not be slain by thee under any misconception. So he continued, and the Rishi Ruru hearing these words of the serpent, and seeing that it was bewildered with fear, 
albeit a snake of the Dundubha species, killed it not. And Ruru, the possessor of the six attributes, comforting the snake addressed it, saying, Tell me fully, O oh, snake, who art thou thus metamorphosed? And the Dundubha replied, O oh, Ruru, I was formerly a Rishi by name Sahasrapat, and it is by the curse of a Brahmana that I have been transformed into a snake. And Ruru asked, O thou best of snakes, for what wast thou cursed by a Brahmana in wrath? And how long also will thy form continue so? And so ends the tenth section of the Paloma Parva of the Adi Parva. Section 11 Paloma Parva continued. So he continued the Dundubha then said, In former times, I had a friend Kagama by name. He was impetuous in his speech and possessed of spiritual power by virtue of his austerities. And one day when he was engaged in the Agni Hatra, fire sacrifice, I made a mock snake of blades of grass, and in a frolic attempted to frighten him with it. And anon he fell into a swoon. On recovering his senses, that truth-telling and thou observing ascetic, burning with wrath, exclaimed, Since thou hast made a powerless mock snake to frighten me, thou shalt be turned even into a venomless serpent thyself by my curse. O ascetic, I well knew the power of his penances, therefore with an agitated heart, I addressed him. Thus, bending low with joined hands, friend, I did this by way of a joke, to excite thy laughter. It behoveth thee to forgive me and revoke thy curse. And seeing me sorely troubled, the ascetic was moved, and he replied, breathing hot and hard. What I have said must come to pass. Listen to what I say and lay it to thy heart. O pious one! When Ruru the pure son of Pramati, will appear, thou shalt be delivered from the curse. The moment thou seest him, thou art the very Ruru and the son of Pramati. On regaining my native form, I will tell thee something for thy good. And that illustrious man and the best of Brahmanas then left his snake body, and attained his own form and original brightness. He then addressed the following words to Ruru of incomparable power, O thou first of created beings, verily the highest virtue of man is sparing the life of others. Therefore a Brahmana should never take the life of any creature. A Brahmana should ever be mild. This is the most sacred injunction of the Vedas. A Brahmana should be versed in the Vedas and Vedanas, and should inspire all creatures with belief in God. He should be benevolent to all creatures, truthful, and forgiving, even as it is. His paramount duty to retain the Vedas in his memory. The duties of the Kshatriya are not thine. To be stern, to wield the scepter and to rule. The subjects properly are the duties of the Kshatriya. Listen, O Ruru, to the account of the destruction of snakes at the sacrifice of Janam Jaya. In days of yore, and the deliverance of the terrified reptiles by that best of Dwajas, Astika, profound in Vedic lore and might in spiritual energy. And so ends the eleventh section of the Paloma Parva of the Adi Parva. Section 12 Paloma Parva continued. So he continued, Ruru then asked, O best of Dwajas, why was King Janam Jaya bent upon destroying the serpents, dash and why and how were they saved by the wise Astika? I am anxious to hear all this in detail. The Rishi replied, O Ruru, the important history of Astika you will learn from the lips of Brahmanas. Saying this, he vanished. So he continued, Ruru ran about in search of the missing Rishi, and, having failed to find him in all the woods, fell down on the ground, fatigued, and revolving in his mind the words of the Rishi, he was greatly confounded and seemed to be deprived of his senses. Regaining consciousness, 
he came home and asked his father to relate the history in question. Thus asked, his father related all about the story. So ends the twelfth section in the Paloma Parva of the ADI Parva.